I know from the minute I was rational, I was in this business. I knew that's the business for me. For the first time I could verbalize to myself. I was four years old, I saw Margaret O'Brien and Journey from Harvard. And she was my age. I said, why is she up there? And why am I sitting here in the Brooklyn Cameo Theater watching her? This is all wrong. Joan Rivers was born Joan Alexandra Malinsky to Russian immigrant parents in Brooklyn on June 8, 1933. She attended Barnard College in Manhattan, where she pursued her interest in performing, determined to succeed in spite of her parents' strong objections. Well, neither one of them went to being in the business, and I was very bitter about that. And my dad was adamant about not having me in the business, so I think that caused a lot of bad feeling. And then after I started to do well, he was the proudest of all. After years of struggling, Rivers finally landed a stint at the Second City Comedy Show in Chicago. And in early 1965 came her big break, an invitation to appear on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. That also led to Rivers meeting her future husband, British film and television producer Edgar Rosenberg. He was Peter Sellers' very good friend, and they had a script they wanted punched up. And I had just done the Carson show, and they had said, oh, there's a very funny girl writer. She'll do a script. And we met with the script, had a conference, and we married in four days. I just knew it was right. Don't ask me, don't. There's nothing to explain it. And it wasn't, ah, gosh, it was everything. It was just right. Rivers made several more appearances on The Tonight Show, as well as The Ed Sullivan Show. And in 1968, gave birth to a daughter, Melissa. So I was very child-oriented. I really adored Melissa and adored being the scout mother, and adored being the teenager's mother with all the kids, and adored... Halloween, for me, was more fun than for her. Throughout the 70s, River Star was on the rise. She was everywhere from TV, comedy, and variety shows to the Vegas Strip. Her tough-talking style of satirical humor broke through taboos and overturned what had been considered acceptable female behavior. In 1983, Rivers, already a household name, was hired as Carson's regular guest host. But three years later, her longtime friendship ended. The soon-to-launch Fox Television Network announced that it was giving Rivers a late-night talk show, making her the first woman to have her own late-night show on a major network. She would be competing directly with Carson, who learned of the show from Fox. It was a, it was a, a bad mix-up and, and very sad because he found me, discovered me, gave me certainly everything of my career at the beginning. And uh, it's never left me. I mean, I've always credited him with absolutely giving me my life. The Late Show starring Joan Rivers turned out to be a disaster. Ratings were poor, and when Rivers challenged Fox executives who wanted to fire her husband as the show's producer, the network fired them both in May 1987. Three months later, Rosenberg killed himself in a Philadelphia hotel room. With suicide, you never get out. I mean, I look around, I think, why did you do this to us? Why did you? And of course, I understand why not. But I mean, he just ripped everything away from us, from my daughter. Rivers continued to perform, though, and tried another talk show on daytime TV. The Joan Rivers Show ran for five years and won her a daytime Emmy for Outstanding Talk Show Host. In September 2010, she started co-hosting the hit e-show, Fashion Police, commenting on the do's and don'ts of celebrity fashion. She's great. She's just the sweetest woman and, and absolutely hilarious. So my, my laughs are not canned. Those are genuine. <laughs> the show was still riding high in the ratings in the summer of 2014, when on August 28th, River stopped breathing while undergoing a minor throat procedure at an outpatient clinic in New York. Resuscitated an hour later, she was transferred to Mount Sinai Hospital and put on life support. Rivers never awoke from a medically induced coma and died on September 4th. She was 81. As news of her death spread, tributes poured in from friends, family, fans, and fellow celebrities. On September 7th, 
a private memorial service at Temple Emmanuel in Manhattan was attended by 1,500 people. Howard Stern delivered the eulogy, describing Rivers as brassy in public and classy in private. A troublemaker, a trailblazer, a pioneer for comics everywhere.